Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do a couple special selections today which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from a person from Germany. Hi Brian, I would love for you to check out the band Pushka. I have selected for this track Koloskovi, Koloskova, which translates to Cradle Song or Lullaby. They also included quite a few links for me to find the lyrics, uh, their Bandcamp page if I didn't want to do the video since it is age restricted, an NPR article about them, and a YouTube channel with some live performances for them. I'll make sure to post some of that in the description for anybody who wants some extra context or information about the band. So let's dive into this with a track called Lullaby, kind of hoping we get something a bit softer and calming. Let's dive into it and see what Pushka is bringing to the table today. little waltz right here. Definitely in a probably a 3-4. I mean that's our that's waltz so Very atmospheric. We have uh, two guitars, a bass, drums, and vocals. A lot of overlap. The two guitars are really doing the same thing. The bass is.
Alright, I'm starting. Oh, I love the drumming here. I'm starting to get a really strong grasp of what they're doing with this. Very much not a lullaby at times. It really makes me want to dig into the lyrics to see where lullaby comes into this. Of course, musically it's present sometimes, but not always. I would not call this song a lullaby, and so I assume there's a there's going to be a link on the uh, lyrical side of things. But we'll get into that in a bit. I got tricked into listening to some black metal. Kind of got tricked into liking some black metal. I think I'm going to save this topic for later in the video. Maybe another video entirely, since it doesn't really have much to do with this track itself, but I'm beginning to have a stronger grasp on what it is specifically about black metal that doesn't work for me. In the past, I've just kind of talked about it being the whole thing, the monotony of it all. But I think I have a better understanding of it now, particularly after this song, but I don't think specifically because of this song. Like I said, we'll touch on that some point in the future. But what I want to focus on here is what the band is doing. The guitars and bass are primarily atmospheric. There's very few sections in here where they take any sort of melodic line at all. Anytime that they do play something that isn't pure chords, it's more of a harmonic function than anything else. Even the first thing we hear from them is outlining chords done through a progression. One guitar... Uh, has this uh, rhythmic line where they kind of go up some notes and then come down some notes and it just perfectly outlines the chord itself while the other one is strumming chords. The bassist is playing something akin to what the first guitar is but only playing some of the notes instead of all of them, emphasizing specific notes themselves. I didn't find any relevance to what was being selected harmonically. It was more of a rhythmic function, uh, creating points of emphasis within the, the phrase itself. The drums are consistently doing something melodic, which I think is awesome. There's usually some sort of backbeat idea going on, creating that metronomic uh, keeping the time function that the drummer typically has in a band, but also allowing the drummer to showcase some of their skills outside of pure timekeeping. And there's a lot of sections in here where there's actually some really great drumming. 
you pay attention to it, it's not, it's nothing that's, I think is entirely eye catching. It's not like they're doing these massive drum solos at every point, but there's always some tasteful ornamentation within keeping in the pocket. The drums are fairly consistent in that. Even when we get into the more metallic sections and we increase how often the drums are hitting things, moving from quarter notes and eighth notes up to sixteenth notes at times, almost going for like some blast beat ideas, they still find ways to uh, tastefully ornament their patterns. The only thing that they've changed is how often they're hitting their drum kit. The guitars and bass are fairly similar. When we move from quieter, more atmospheric sections, well, can it, they're all atmospheric, quieter, more sparse sections to more filled areas, we tend to have a timbre shift, putting some distortion, some crunch, uh, some compression on the guitars in order to get that distorted metal guitar vibe. And we're usually playing more often maybe moving once again from quarter notes and eighth notes to sixteenth notes. It's about creating that wall of sound at times. It's all done in service for atmosphere. It doesn't matter if it is a sparser section or a heavier section. It doesn't matter if they're playing something light or heavy and dense. The guitars, the bass, the drums, they never take anything melodic away from the vocals and what it does is it creates an atmosphere and foundation for the vocals to excel within the band is creating the mood for the vocalist to tell you a story that's what every piece of this song is and there was a black metal section in here blast beats 16th note picking shrieking on top of it very black metal adjacent but it was done as a texture, a, a moment of the song. and We never really revisited it. We do have more metallic sections in here, but a majority of this track is sparser clean electric guitar work, lighter, sparser drum work, really allowing the bass to be present in the mix and a lot of it to fill in the low end. But through this lens, a black metal section is exactly what I would expect. It is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best, if not the best, metal subgenre for atmosphere. Especially a specific kind of atmosphere. I completely forgot about post metal. That's a really good one for atmosphere, too. Black metal, though, is specifically great at uh, creating weight and negativity i think post rock or sorry post metal can go in a lot of different ways it can be weighty of course but it can also be overwhelmingly uplifting however they really want to go about it and while i'm sure there is some more positive black metal out there i feel like what it does really well is create haze and static and dread and dreariness just really good at being gray and so I think this song already having a bit of a dreary atmosphere to it, putting this black metal moment in it to create weight and density, a massive wall of sound and amplifying the dreariness of the track. It's a really great way to introduce a metallic section to an atmospheric track like this. And her vocals lend themselves very well to the black metal style anyways. So there isn't even really any manipulation of the vocals in order to get to that point or in order to make that, that section feel more authentic to the, the blueprint of the genre, I guess. What I'm saying, though, is that the black metal is a really good choice. It fits a lot of what the band is doing sonically, atmospherically, emotionally, and even rhythmically. The band basically jumps between these two ideas uh, as foundation, of course, 
Uh, it's not like all the sparse sections are exactly the same, but they all have the same foundation and build up to them. Uh, none of them really go outside the bounds of the description that I used of our opening section. And the heavier metal sections are the same way. The foundation and the way that they're built up, the blueprint that they follow is the same, even if the sections, the riffs themselves, the drum patterns themselves are different. This takes us to what I think is a key element of this track, the vocals. Black metal can be an emotive style of music if you can get past the hurdles. I have never been able to do that. In order for me to connect with black metal, black metal needs to remove the hurdles and bring the emotion to me. It can't create a wall that I have to get around. I bring them up often, but they still are, to me, a highlight of this style, Ash Inspire. Their 2022 album, Hostile Architecture, is certainly black metal at its heart. It's loud, it's noisy, it's abrasive, it's a lot of blast beats and 16th notes, but it breaks out of the monotonous harmonic ideas of third wave black metal. It breaks out of the low fidelity production and it breaks out of having a single vocal note persistent through an entire experience and goes for something more traditionally or more mainstream clarity of emotional delivery. The vocalist changes up a lot of the ways that they say things in order to get that emotion across. The same thing is happening here. I find a much easier time connecting with this song on an emotional level because the vocals are displaying their emotions in a way that is exceptionally clear to me. I don't have to get I don't have to do any work in order to find out how the vocalist is feeling because the delivery of the vocals are consistently changing and adapting probably to the words being said. It certainly isn't to the music. The first time we go into any type of harsh vocals is still during a light, sparse <laughs> section of the track. It really took me off guard, given the, the juxtaposition between the ambiance that the band was giving me and the shrill vocals in my ear. But it absolutely works. There's uh, a gentleness to the clean singing that I think presents a very calm element of the vocal delivery. It can also be sorrowful, though, melancholy, wistful. It really depends on how the vocalist wants to go about it. This is just typical clean vocal work. I mean, uh, it, I think clean vocals are fairly understandable to most people and the way that people sing things change their inflection just change their timbre alter where their voice is placed put a little bit of i don't know a little bit of compression on your clean vocals and you can immediately tell an audience how you're feeling and for the most part the audience is going to pick that up whether they enjoy clean vocals or not it's just so baked into our understanding of, of music of sung music specifically when it comes to harsh vocals this is where people tend to have a little bit more problem having that that delivery be as as clear and I think a lot of it is just that most people don't listen to harsh vocals. So you already have the hurdle of hearing a new noise. And then you also have the hurdle of understanding this new language. Or I guess we could even have it as a, I mean, classify as like a dialect. You still understand the words, especially if, the, if you have the lyrics um, by you. But it's difficult to parse out how they're supposed to feel because it's delivered in a, a way you're not used to. Even after years of listening to 
harsh vocals, I still have a tough time parsing out the emotions sometimes unless it's very clear and the harshes are used as an exclamation point on specific words. Here though, there is a vast variety in the harsh vocals. There are lower ones, there are higher ones, there's mixed with cleans, there's intermediate cleans, which I thought was very cool. There are moments where she will be singing clean. She'll be moving towards a pure harsh. And in between that transition, she's going to hit some points that are half clean and half harsh. But they're done in a way that feels like it's right on the cusp of where your voice cracks between your chest and your head voice. And so it adds even more anguish to them. And it feels like it is an act of perseverance and willpower to push into or come out of the harsh vocal and to me that adds so much to the emotional weight and the storytelling of the song especially when you pair it with the weight the dreariness the melancholy of the song at large i think i still will save this topic for another video probably in its own, but I'm going to say right here, it's like a, a thesis. The vocalist is going to be, I think, my biggest benefactor when it comes to enjoying black metal. Musically, harmonically, I'm also looking for more progressive ideas from the bands. But I think if anyone wants me to listen to just straightforward black metal music, the vocalist needs to do stuff that's interesting. And this vocalist does that. And it takes me on the journey with the band. Through the lows, through the highs, through the anguish and pain. I can feel all of it. The music isn't doing any more heavy lifting than the vocalist is. Everybody's contributing to the overall vibes of this track. And as far as I'm concerned, it shines through and cuts above the noise of their contemporaries, cuts above the, the noise of other bands like them and elevates them, pushes them to the top. I'm kind of interested in more. This isn't something I, I would listen to all the time, of course. But I do think I could be in a specific mood to check this out, which is probably the highest compliment I can give for something black metal adjacent, though I also recognize the black metal aspect was so little of this. There's a lot in this track, probably about 70 that I would say are not is not black metal adjacent. So it does make me wonder, you know, if I listen to a track that is more heavily devoted to a metallic sound, especially a blackened sound, would I enjoy that as much as I enjoyed this? And enjoy is kind of a weird word, but I really like it from an artistic perspective. It does one of the things that art can do very well particularly even sonic art, which is take the listener to, to places they didn't know they could be taken to. Whether that's a, a high, feeling elevation and, and joy, or a low, the pain and anguish of this track. I'm going to take a moment to hit some lyrics. I'm pretty sure I read that they had to be translated, so we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to wrap this one up. This song, based on the translation I got, seems to be about the grievances and woes somebody has about a one-sided relationship. It doesn't quite speak to the nature of the relationship. There's definitely a nurturing element to it, which kind of leans me, leads me to the idea of a parent and a child, but it could also be a toxic relationship where one person takes and the other one only gives. Uh, again, 
there's no real information about what kind of relationship this is, so I don't want to look too far into that. But there is a feeling of giving everything you have to this other thing, person. Oh, that's another good, like, is it another person? Could we take this into more of a cerebral part of multiple uh, versions of oneself on the inside? Putting so much energy into presenting yourself as one way when it's not necessarily who you are. Like, there's there's a lot of ways to take this concept um, in a more direct manner rather than just this general overview. But it talks about how the days go round and round, looking towards their feet, waiting for support with eyebrows raised. They're by themselves. They have no rock. They only have themselves. It says they can see things coming apart at the seams, songs of unfulfilled dreams. This is a really interesting metaphor right here. It says in wed in in wedding photos you see couples standing together. Isn't it okay to stand alone though? The wedding photos specifically brings up a romantic relationship, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. It could just be the idea of fulfillment and finding it by yourself. Finding fulfillment by marrying somebody and creating this new entity as one together and building a family and all that. It, it definitely has a, uh, I think, a cultural appeal to it, at least in the Western world of having made it right now you're married this is a big accomplishment it's a big day um, and to find that isn't it okay to find that by yourself though can't you find self-fulfillment it shouldn't that be fine the next stanza is really interesting because it speaks of the pain of this it says i've spent my most precious time Scattered, shattered, broken, unrecoverable. Do you want me to tell you just to take it? It hurts to realize sometimes how you never say anything. Again, one-sided. The conversation is even one-sided. The next stanza shows us... Uh, the narrator trying to lull this other person to sleep. Shh, quietly, hush, I'll sing. Go to sleep, never seen by anyone. Tell me about your fears. Again, very nurturing. Exercising a lot of energy in order to keep this other person or aspect, thing, whatever it is, um, happy and quiet. The final stanza, I'm not quite sure how to read. It's just a bunch of negativity, isolated words in a stream of consciousness, request, deformability, forged shape, puffiness, rotten aftertaste, suggestive desires, coercive form, passive elements, the laughter of beasts. The best I can make of that is a stream of consciousness of the negativity they feel surrounding this or being stuck where they are. There is desperation in here, I feel, but also an unsureness of how to get out, of how to break this cycle. Even after speaking about the pain that they feel, the lack of removal from the situation they say days go round and round i wait for support it's a cycle that doesn't end i'm in pain i'm in anguish i don't like doing this i have tons of dreams unfulfilled i've spent my most precious time on this i am broken and unrecoverable and immediately after that goes to placate this other character, this other thing. Hush, go to sleep, I'll sing to you, don't worry anymore. What is it 
that you fear. Let me know. Let me take that burden off of you. The nurture of it. The cycle doesn't end. The character does not escape this relationship through appeasing this other. And through that non-escape returns to the despair. Yeah, I think a lot of the feelings in the lyrics match the feelings of the music. It's definitely a dreary, gray, negative feeling song built entirely by the atmosphere of the band and really delivered through the vocals to feel this pain and anguish and the lyrics just line up with that so well. Those are my thoughts on uh, Pushka's Koleskova. Let me know what you thought of this track down in the comments. Give me your thoughts, perspectives, opinions, if you agree with anything I said or disagree. Maybe you have your own way of seeing things. Let me know. Above the comment section in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have one more special selection today. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, where we wrap up this double week theme with our final studio and live comparison. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.